What's up you guys, it's Shane. So this is a question that's been coming up a lot lately and to be honest with you it's kind of a confusing question and it's not sort of like a one size fits all sort of answer. So I thought I'd make this video to break down, you know, step by step which one is better uh, to invest in out of the Roth IRA and the 401k and then break it down even further and figure out which one is going to be better for your specific situation and which one is going to end up making you the most money in the long run. And seriously, if you're at all confused about which one would be better for your specific situation or which one would be better for you to invest in in the long run, it's your lucky day. Because just by watching this video until the end and understanding a few of these simple concepts will make it to where I can pretty much guarantee you that you will save tens of thousands if not hundreds of thousands of dollars in the long run. Which means you'll be able to basically buy anything you want, you'll be able to just eat hummus on the beach all day long and and have someone feed you grapes and hire somebody to fan you. And I know that guaranteeing anything is a very bold claim to make, but I can pretty much guarantee you that if you pay attention, you watch the video till the very end, and you smash that like button because this video took forever to make, then you'll understand exactly why and that will help you to make a good decision for you. And in turn, you will save a ton of money. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna basically go over what a 401k is and a Roth IRA is, and then I'm gonna go over the pros and cons of each one. So a 401k is basically a retirement plan that is sponsored by your employer, and it basically allows you to take a piece of your paycheck out before you actually get the paycheck and invest that piece of money before it, you get the check and before you're taxed. So it's basically pre-tax, pre-paycheck money. Now, a lot of the time, different employers will offer some sort of matching program where they'll basically match the amount of money that you put into your 401k. So maybe up to 5% of your paycheck, they will match dollar for dollar. And so if you're making you know, $50,000, they will uh, match you as long as you put up to 2,500, they'll match you an additional 2,500. And if your employer offers this, you pretty much have to take it. I mean, it is basically free money. Like if your employer offers that, definitely, definitely go for that up to the point where they stop matching. Now, another thing about the 401k is it has a $19,000 contribution limit uh, as of 2019. And that's a lot more than what the IRA offers. So you can put quite a bit of money into your 401k every single year. Another great thing about the 401k is you can use it as a bit of a tax write-off. So any amount of money that you put into the 401k doesn't get taxed that year. So if you're in a slightly higher tax bracket, you could put a certain amount of money into your 401k and get yourself down to a lower tax bracket by doing that. So as an example, if you make $50,000 a year and you put $5,000 into your 401k, you would only get taxed $45,000 a year. Pretty simple. To take this a step further, let's say you're making $50,000 a year and you put $11,000 into your 401k, so therefore your profit is showing as $39,000 a year, well, you'd go into a lower tax bracket. You could potentially pay 10% less on the profit that you make because you're in a lower tax bracket. Now, this is all kind of complicated and you, you do have to basically talk to, you know, a professional that's in your state because, you know, different things can make it more complicated. I'm, I'm simplifying things like quite a bit here. So you do need to look into your specific situation, you know, speak with a licensed CPA that is familiar with your state. And then another advantage of the 401k is you're not taxed now, you're taxed later when you pull it out. So if you're planning on not making as much money later on in life, for instance, if you're retired, then this is perfect for you because you wouldn't have to pay as much in taxes later on in life. But that's actually one of the cons of uh, doing the 401k as well, because if you do end up making more money later on in life, you're going to end up paying even more in taxes than if you would have just paid taxes you know, at the very beginning when you were first contributing to your 401k. And another thing is, is you can only keep your 401k until you're 70 and a half years old. At that age, you are forced to withdraw it. And the problem with that is, you know, the market could be down at that time. Like, let's say the market crashes right when you turn 70 and it hasn't recovered by the time you're 70 and a half. Well, you're kind of going to be SOL. And because of this, you really have to time when you pull your 401k out 
and you have to really get strategic and figure out when you're gonna pull it out and when you're gonna retire. Now, another problem with the 401k is in the event that taxes get higher in the future, which there is a very good chance that taxes will get higher in the future, like a very good chance, just look at the US debt right now. I mean, we are so far in debt how do you think the U.S. is going to pay off that interest to other countries in the future? They're going to have to tax us more. So I would say that there is a very good chance that taxes are actually going to be higher in the future than they are right now. And if that happens, you will actually end up paying more for taxes than if you were to have just paid taxes now. And another con for the 401k is your employer has a lot of control over your investment. You don't have full control over your investment like you do you know, with a normal investment account or an IRA. Your employer does have some control and some say over what your investments are. And the last thing is, is there's a lot of hidden fees with the 401k that you have to pay people you know, to manage your account. Whereas if you were to just put your money in an IRA, you could pay very, very low fees if you want, if you just invested uh, your money into index funds. They have like 0.03% fees for handling your money. Now the Roth IRA, on the other hand, is a special retirement account that you fund with what's known as post-tax income. And that basically just means that you can't deduct those contributions on your taxes. And this allows you to have tax-free compounding, which is even better than normal compounding. And normal compounding has been said to be the eighth wonder of the world. So that's pretty good. So one of the biggest pros to having an IRA is that you don't have to pay taxes on the money that you earn in that account in the future. This means that let's say you're paying 25% in taxes right now and when you're 60 years old you're paying you know let's say 50% in taxes well you wouldn't have to pay that 50% and you would end up saving 30% in taxes or more so this is especially good if you're young and you know you're in like a lower tax bracket right now this is especially good for you because you're not making that much money and therefore you're not paying that much in taxes now, you can pull out your contributions to the account anytime you want. And what I mean by that is, let's say you put 20,000 into an account and the, through the magic of compound interest, it goes to 30,000. You can pull that 20,000 that you put in anytime you want without getting taxed or without getting penalized. However, if you try to pull the additional 10,000 out, you will get taxed on it and you're going to get penalized on it. So you really do not want to do that. And another great thing about the Roth IRA is you have pretty much complete control over your investments. If you want to go really aggressive and you, you know, really believe in one company, you can do that. Or if you want to be really safe and conservative, which I recommend, and just go into an index fund, you can also do that. Now, one of the bad things about a Roth IRA is you do have to wait until you're 59 and a half before you can pull that money out. You know, this is why it's considered to be a retirement account. And like I said earlier, if you try to pull the interest out before that age, 59 and a half, you know, having the account five years or more, you are going to get taxed and penalized 10%. And then another bad thing that kind of sucks about the Roth IRA is you can only put $6,000 in every single year. And if you take any money out, it doesn't matter. You can't put it back in. So if you take, you know, put 6,000 in and then take 6,000 out, well, you already put 6,000 in. You can't put anything more in until the next year. And then another thing is there's a lot of income limits with the Roth IRA. Um, at the time of recording this video, if you're single, um, the income limit is $135,000 a year and it changes every couple years. So you definitely want to look into that if you're watching this and you're looking into a Roth IRA. So now that you know the pros and cons of both, now let's go ahead and get into which one is a better option for your specific situation. Now, if you're young and you're not making a lot of money uh, and you're in a low tax bracket, the Roth IRA is probably going to be better for you. So let's say like a theoretical scenario, you're in high school or college and you're making about 20,000 a year from your part-time job and your side hustles. 
you know, you definitely would want to be putting at least, you know, maxing it out, putting $6,000 a year into your Roth IRA. However, if you're in a very high tax bracket and you're making a lot of money every year, the Roth IRA may not be the best option for you. For instance, let's say you are currently running a business making $500,000 a year and you don't think this business is gonna last very long. Let's say you opened up like a bunch of avocado toast shops and five years from now you think, you know, avocado toast isn't gonna be popular anymore and you only expect to be making, let's say, $100,000 a year when you retire. Well, in that case, then the 401k would likely be a better option for you. Now, if you're making 500k a year, but you still think you're gonna be making more money around the time that you're going to retire, then you would still want to look into the Roth IRA. Now, most people are going to be in a lower tax bracket when they retire. And the reason for that is because they've already bought their house, so they don't have to pay rent, they don't have a lot of overhead expenses, and they're pretty much just living off of their savings. Now, the other big problem with the 401k, like I mentioned before, is that you have no idea what the tax situation is going to be like in the future. So with all that being said, here is my personal recommendation on what I would do. But before I say that, I just want to quickly tell you that I am not a finance professional. I do this for educational and entertainment purposes only. You know, this is just my opinion and you need to do your own research. So in my opinion, if your employer offers matching 401k, you should absolutely do both. They are both really, really good options, but if you're young and you're not making much money, then you should prioritize the Roth IRA. So let's go over a theoretical example so you can kind of get an idea of what I'm talking about. So let's say that you're 18 and you just got a really good job, an entry level job making, let's just say $50,000 a year because you watched my videos and you followed my recommendations and you did your research. Well, the Roth IRA would probably be better for you at this time because you're likely going to be making less money now than you are in the future because you will probably you know, be making six figures at some point. However, if your employer offers matching, then you absolutely should take advantage of it. So again, let's just say out of the $50,000 you make every year, you can only invest $10,000 every year and your employer offers 5% matching. You would want to put all 5% of that matching into your 401k, which would be 2,500, and then your company would match you dollar for dollar, so you'd be putting $5,000 a year into your 401k. Then, out of the 7,500 that's left, you would put 6,000 of that into your Roth IRA, and then you would have about 1,500 left over to either put into an index fund, you know, invest in real estate or, or whatever you want to do with it. And assuming you withdraw all of it at 65 years old with a 7% return on investment adjusted for inflation, then you would actually end up pulling over $2 million out of both the Roth IRA and the 401k. And then after taxes, you'd have a little bit less than $4 million total. And if you put that on the stock market and you got, again, 7% returns, you would be getting basically almost $300,000 a year that you could easily live off uh, in your retirement. And that means you could retire on almost $300,000 a year and you wouldn't even be touching the principal. You would just be living off of the interest. And uh, that's really not too bad considering you would probably have at least one house, if not several houses that are already paid off and you would have a very, very low cost of living. All right, that's it. So if you made it to the end, I really appreciate you watching. Please, if you haven't already done so, go ahead and smash the like button, uh, hit the subscribe button, uh, hit the notification bell, and go ahead and comment below as well. I really appreciate everybody that watches and comments, and I respond to every single comment. So thank you again for watching, and until next time. Hey guys, in today's video, I want to talk about the differences between a traditional 401k and a Roth 401k. In today's video, I'm going to break it down into three different categories. The first being the definitions of a traditional 401k, the definition of a Roth 401k. Next, I want to talk about what your employer can actually match if you have an employer match 401k plan. And finally, I want to talk about what is considered a qualified withdrawal 
from your 401k account and what is considered an unqualified withdrawal and what penalties are associated with those. A traditional 401k account works by allowing you to take a certain portion of your income and put it directly into a retirement fund without it being taxed. This is beneficial because it allows you to take a larger portion of your income and put it in that retirement fund. If you do this early on in your career, this can really help you improve your earnings or growth in the retirement fund you're putting that money into. The only problem with a traditional 401k account is that whenever you go to take that money out of the retirement fund, you have to pay money not only on the principal that you put in, you have to also pay taxes on all of the gains or growth that that fund experienced over the years that you worked. A Roth, on the other hand, is a little bit different. A Roth allows you to take a certain portion of your income and put it in a retirement fund. However, you're taxed on it immediately whenever you put it into the retirement fund. The benefit with the Roth, though, is that whatever gains or earnings that fund experienced over the years that you were working, whenever you go to pull it out in retirement, you don't have to worry about paying any type of tax on the earnings or growth of the fund whenever you take out the money for retirement. This can be big. With Whenever you work 25 to 30 years, the growth on the fund can actually outweigh that of the principal put into the fund. So this can be a huge tax incentive if you're looking to invest in a Roth. The second topic I'm wanting to talk about is if you have a company match 401k plan. This means that your company will match a certain amount of money you put into your 401k account. So if you do have a company match 401k, something that many people don't realize is companies cannot put any type of money or contributions towards your Roth 401k. They have to put the contributions towards a traditional 401k or some type of pre-taxed fund. Only you as the individual can put money into a Roth 401k. And you're actually limited per year to $19,000 that you can put into your Roth 401k if you're under the age of 50. If you're over the age of 50, you can actually put up to $25,000 per year. And this is as of 2019. So the last topic I'm wanting to talk about today, guys, is what is considered a qualified withdrawal from your 401k accounts. So for both a traditional 401k and a Roth 401k, in order to make a qualified withdrawal, you must be at least 59 and a half years of age or older and have been in the account for at least five years. There are certain special situations where you can withdraw early from the 401k accounts and those typically involve life-changing events that make it difficult for you to work. If you still need to make a withdrawal from your 401k account before you've met those criteria, you'll have to do something called an unqualified withdrawal. So with unqualified withdrawals, you have to pay a 10% fee for an early withdrawal fee, and you will also have to pay taxes on the amount of money you withdraw from the account. However, with a Roth and a traditional, the amount of money that you actually have to pay in taxes will be different. So let me explain that. A traditional 401k, you haven't paid any taxes on at this point, whenever you're trying to make the withdrawal. So whatever money you withdraw from the account, you're gonna to have to pay taxes on the full amount that you withdraw. However, this is different with the Roth because you've already paid a certain amount of taxes on the money in the account with the Roth 401k. So you will only have to pay taxes on the earnings of that account. So this is another difference between the traditional 401k and the Roth 401k. Those are really the big differences that I have between the traditional 401k and the Roth 401k, guys. They are both very useful tools for your retirement, and if you start them early, you will be very, very happy in the future that you did so. I hope you guys liked the video. Thank you so much for watching. If you did like the video, please give it a like and consider subscribing to the channel. I'll see you guys next time. Hello, everyone. So today we're going to talk about how to open up a Roth IRA. And the reason why I chose Fidelity was because I just felt that it's a very easy process to set up an account with them. And they're also very informative in terms of educating you on, on different types of retirement accounts. Um, so before we start, I quickly want to go over the key advantages of a Roth IRA. Um, so depending on your situation, uh, you might want to look at some of these other options that Fidelity offers. Uh, for example, the traditional IRA is a more of a tax deferred retirement account. So basically, you will pay taxes uh, when you withdraw your money. And a Roth IRA account is the opposite. So a Roth IRA account, uh, your account will basically grow tax-free. So the accumulation of your 
investments throughout the years will not be taxed when you uh, withdraw your money on retirement. So for the purpose of today's video, we're going to go ahead and just focus on the Roth IRA. And this page here gives you a lot of good information on more of having a Roth IRA. Earnings grow federally tax-free, tax-free withdrawals. And for account futures, we're going to go ahead and click on this tablet here. And it will give you a lot more information in terms of the eligibility of the Roth IRA. So as you can see here, there is no age limit. Uh, maximum contributions are $5,500 per year. However, if you're over 50, you can contribute $6,500 per year. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look at the fees. And as far as the fees go, uh, Fidelity charges $495 for every online um, stock transaction. Um, however, they do offer commission-free um, ETFs and also mutual funds, which is pretty... Uh, pretty unique. It really makes uh, investment a lot easier. Okay, so let's say we want to open up a Roth account. We're going to go ahead and click here where it says open a Roth IRA. And it's going to take us to the information um, page here. So if you have previously been a Fidelity customer, um, you can click yes. If you're, if you're new to the website, then let's go ahead and click no. Okay, it's going to ask you for some basic information. Uh, let's go ahead and type that in. All right, so once you have your information there, we're gonna go ahead and uh, get started. And then it's gonna take us to a more personal information. So pretty basic, um, first and last name, social security number, date of birth, uh, whether you're a US citizen or not, telephone number, email, pretty much your basic application. Uh, once you're done with that, you're gonna go ahead and click next. And it's going to take you to uh, your account confirmation. So it's a pretty uh, easy process to, to, to start the account. Uh, it's no charge. It's absolutely free. Uh, once you fill all the information out, then it'll take you straight to the uh, Roth IRA platform. And that's where you'll be able to make your contributions. So I hope that was helpful. Um, I know it was kind of a short video, but it's really an easy process. Uh, it's, it's not as hard as as uh, it may seem. Just understand that uh, whatever retirement account you choose, whether it's a Roth IRA or a traditional, make sure that you know it's the right one for you depending on you know the tax bracket that you're in, uh, whether you wanna be taxed today or do you wanna be taxed when you retire. Uh, that really just depends on, 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 on you. So anyways, I hope that was helpful. If you liked the video, uh, please leave me a like. And uh, I'm going to be making a lot more educational videos on how to open up retirement accounts, uh, invest, investing related videos. So if you're interested in learning more about that, go ahead and subscribe. And uh, I really do look forward to making these videos for you. So have a great day. Thank you.